Hi, I hope you're doing well. So this week and next week, we are learning probably one of the hardest songs of the semester. It's called The Lost Chord. Okay, so I'm going to go over some uh, key points with you together. So first of all, make sure you're sitting in front of the middle, middle C. Okay, so next, what would be the next step? What do I always talk about every time I make a video about a song? It's meter. Okay. Why is it important? Because if you look at the meter, it gives you a very basic idea of how the song should go. It's 4-4 four, four now. So you should be counting 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, like that. See? Now, why did I say this is one of the hardest songs? Uh, that's because, you see, you're supposed to read two sets of five lines simultaneously, right? And you see how many notes appear vertically together, like here. Your right hand starts with X, and your, right, your left hand starts with Y, okay? And you have to play them together, okay? So you play these notes together because they are vertically aligned and your right hand keeps going and your left hand you see there's a tie here there's a tie here so what do you do here you don't play this note okay so this is a whole note tied to a half note so in most cases your sound will have faded away even then do not replay this why because if you played this this sign wouldn't be doing anything yeah so oh, you just ignore the sign so that's not good okay and then your right hand plays two notes and here please review your rest signs okay your rest signs are part of the very first handout um we um went over this semester so it's the handout uh, keyboard and musical notations okay so this counts for how many bit this rest sign this rest should be exactly as long as your quarter note so this in other words this rest should count um one beat okay so and what else there are so many things you have to be careful about that's why this song is so hard and then some flat or sharp will make an appearance and so let's look at this together this one this is one note it belongs to the bass clef so this is a b right b right below the middle c so when you see something like this you don't have to play a b you only play b flat okay so yeah not b but it's b flat okay so uh and then um you might be wondering why do some notes have lines going upward and others going downward it makes no difference yeah it's just cosmetic so yeah upward i'm sorry upward like this or downward here you see they are both quarter notes okay so um going back to flat and sharp this measure remember measure is a square unit this measure has a b and then followed by more b's what are you going to do here are you going to play a b flat here and then playing b's here or all b flat yeah, this is something I talk about in the updated, in the revised handout on sharp, flat, and natural, which I put in the um, uh, October 7th folder. No, October 14th folder. This week's folder. Yeah, the folder you found the sheet music for law school. So that should be October 14th, right? Yeah. So. Please review that if you don't have an answer. Yeah, this sign is very specific here. So uh, this measure too. F is sharp, right? G is sharp and there is another G here within the same measure. So what do you do? Yeah. 
So yeah, again, please look at the revised handout on sharp, flat, and natural. Okay, so, uh, yeah, so we talked about the meter. We talked about the fact that we have to play both hands together. And then we talked about the wrist sign. Okay, the wrists are obviously part of the music, so it matters how long you pause here. Okay. Well, you pause here as written, but in the end you pause in the way the whole measure adds up to 4-4. Four, four. Okay, so now let's talk about fingering. So, fingering, um, again, you might have learned when you were younger that your right hand thumb will go on the middle C and your left hand, pinky, will go on the lower C. You might have learned that, but that does not apply when you learn a song. When you learn a song, yeah, with any song you learn, fingering is uh, really up to each case. It's all case by case. There's no rule, in other words. So in this song, they they give you some uh, pointers as to what finger to use. Yeah. So yeah, look uh, look at the right hand. It says one, right? Why do they say one on F? What would you expect just from that information? They want you to use your thumb. I'm talking about here. On F. Why? I think you can guess that this melody is only gonna go up. This is F, right? They want you to use your thumb here. So it suggests to me that for a, for a little while at least the song is just gonna go up that way, not that way. They are gonna they are not gonna tell you to use your thumb here if your next note is here. Okay? So you can expect your next note to be in this area, not here. Okay? And then your left hand says three. That's very strange to just start right in the middle. But so let's try to guess. This is so this uh, I didn't wanna give it away, but this is a A, this is an A below the middle C. They tell you to use three here. So it tells me that you're gonna play around this area. Oh yeah, first, and that is the case. So now so always, always kind of look ahead. Later in this textbook, they are not gonna tell you what finger to use, but I, I tried to uh, give you a sense of how to go about it just now. Kind of look ahead. If your right hand is gonna go, let's say this is a starting note of a song, okay? For your right hand. And if the rest of the melody tended to be in that area, use your thumb. If this is the first note of the melody, and then the melody kind of hovered around this area, then I will use my middle finger. Okay, so now let's say your melody also starts on this E, okay? But this time the melody, because it it's gonna move this way. So what finger are you gonna use? It's the pinky so that you have more fingers left to move that way. Same idea with the left hand. And uh, about still talking about fingering, I just wanted to point out this thumb is on the middle C. Can you tell this is the middle C? If not, you need to review the same handout from the first week. The same handout that's going to help you figure out the rest sign. Okay. Uh, keyboard and musical notations handout. This is lower, right? So just looking at where the note head note heads move, you can tell this is lower. I'm not going to give away what this note is, so I'm going to play a wrong note on purpose. So this is the middle C. Middle C here. Okay. And then you need to go somewhere. Let's say it's this note, it's Naba. So this is a middle C, and then the next note you play is here. So you could easily just use your index finger and jump, jump. But again, the key to an efficient fingering is to look ahead, middle C, right? So this mystery note that's lower, and then it's gonna go back to the middle C, you see? So does it make sense to go jump, jump? Uh, first of all, you should be using your thumb on the middle C, okay? But do not jump with your middle, uh, with your thumb, because you need the thumb back again right afterwards. So, what are you gonna do? I would say leaving your uh, thumb on the middle C like this, and then just reach over whatever the note is. It could be here. Let's say it's here. It's not about it. Just you see, your hand can stretch quite a bit. So, 
you can and then you can come back right away to the middle C. Okay, so don't ever go yeah, jump, jump, jump. It's not efficient. Okay, so I'm going to give you a sense of what the song is going to sound like. So one, two, three, four. Can you see? One, two, and three, four, and one, two, three, four, and like that. Again, whenever you have two eighth notes, two of them together form one beat. So that's why I'm counting two and and why did I say two here? Because it's the second beat of the measure. This is the first beat, right? One, two, and three, four, and one, two, rest, four, and like that. And this rest is beat three. And just exactly as long as a, uh, one beat. Okay, so, oh uh, yeah, about two eighth notes in succession. Uh, I can understand this. You are, st you, you know, you are only starting to learn the uh, piano, so I understand this completely. But uh, a lot of you have the tendency to play two eighth notes like this. Yeah. What's the problem with this? You see, the second one is longer than the first one, right? But if they are both eighth notes, they should have the same length. So that is a problem. So this one too, you have to play a quarter note followed by two eighth notes, a quarter note followed by two eighth notes. So which no, uh, which rhythm should you aim for? Or which one do you think is more accurate? Yeah, this is the first, uh, yeah, you, I hope you said the first one. Okay, so um, I'm going to, so I need both hands, so you are not going to see uh, the music, but I hope you have your music with you. So again, count one blank measure, and I'm going to just play the first system. System is the line, so I'm going to play up to here. I'm going to demonstrate to you a few things how it looks how it looks to play both hands together and also kind of uh, I want to kind of give you a feel of how the song um, flows so one two three four one and three four and one two rest four and Let me do this one more time, a little slower. One, two, three, four. One, two, and three, four, and one, two. Four, and one, two, and three, four. Like that. So, yeah, this uh, song is very challenging, so whenever you are not sure what to do, check your um, keyboard and musical notations handout first. And uh, yeah, th you might still have questions, so don't hesitate to reach out to me. But hopefully this uh, video was helpful to you somewhat. Okay, I'm really looking forward to um, seeing your work. So good luck, have fun, and yeah, I'll talk to you soon. Thank you guys.